Adler. Um, Richard, good to see you on the programme. It really feels like President Duterte is now peddling back. Yeah, definitely. It was such a big disappointment that he was not able to have that meeting with President Obama. Uh, this was his, his uh, global diplomatic debut, and many people were expecting him to have a much more statement-like and composed side, which he also has. But unfortunately, it seems that he was not able to hold himself together prior to the conference, and Obama had to cancel it after those offensive statements that Duterte uttered once again. But if you look at his other meetings, for instance, with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and other major Asian leaders, they went very smoothly. So this also reflects the fact that when it comes to human rights issues, which President Obama very clearly said will be part of his discussions with Duterte, he's extremely sensitive and he sees them uh, in, uh, in terms of inter uh, interference in Philippine domestic affairs. But the rest of the trip so far has been going very smoothly for Duterte. And Duterte and Obama, both their governments, have made sure that this temporary TIF or diplomatic setback will not create long-term strain in bilateral relations. The but fundamental he, he, of Philippine and U.S. relations will still continue despite this spat. I mean, you say that he can be statesman-like, but it isn't out of character. He's, he's insulted many people in the past, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when it comes to the United States, uh, uh, Duterte has broken one taboo after the other. He asked the American president to shut his mouth during the elections when he was criticized over his inappropriate rape joke. He later on uh, uh, uttered a gay slur against the American ambassador, and now this inappropriate comment against President Obama. But if you look at his statement towards other countries, including China, and specifically China, with which the Philippines has had very tense uh, uh, maritime tensions in the South China Sea, he He's very statement-like and very composed. So that's why many people think maybe he just has some beef with the United States because of the human rights issues. And perhaps also because when he was the mayor of Davao in, in Mindanao, there was a feeling that the United States was somehow behind the military conflict in that region. So it seems he has some beef with the United States. But overall, when it comes to his rhetoric towards China and other major Asian countries, uh, also Japan, he seems to be much more statement-like and much more composed. Uh, the Philippines uh, remains a strong ally the United States, but President Duterte himself has, as you say, consistently been trying to repair ties with China. So no doubt this, this will concern the United States. Oh, definitely. But, I mean, to be fair to the United States, I think they would also want some level of diplomatic engagement between Philippines and China. I mean, when you two countries have such a bitter territorial disputes, the fact that there were no operational or institutionalized interaction between the Philippines and China under the previous administration of Benigno Aquino itself could have become a reason for greater conflict and tension. So if Duterte is going to reach out to China and find a peaceful uh, and, and reasonable settlement in the South China Sea, then let it be. But of course, for the United States, uh, sometimes they feel that uh, Duterte seems much more critical of the United States and less critical of China, when perhaps he should be more critical of China. And many people in the Philippines are also raising their eyebrows why Duterte is, is extending the olive branch toward China while speaking so toughly on the United States. But I think, uh, in my point of view, what he's trying to do is create equilateral balancing strategy towards uh, both superpowers. There's a feeling that under previous administration, the Philippines was too dependent on the United States. States and too confrontational towards China. So he's now trying to recalibrate that, but perhaps the rhetoric sometimes is over the board. Richard Haydarian, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your analysis. And of course, you can get much more on our website or smartphone app. There you'll also find a collection of some of the more memorable insults and comments made by or about those in positions of power. Just go to the usual place.